On this episode of Under the Radar Michigan, we travel all the way to Japan. In Saginaw, that is. We'll also meet a man who bakes bread that some people just can't live without, eat at a place the locals love, and talk to an artist who's helping move Saginaw forward. Then we head to Claire where we'll find out why cops really are attracted to donuts. We'll also see some hotel history, and thanks to some TV magic, eat at the White House. Not. Get ready to explore the cool people, places, and things that make Michigan a great place to be. Under the Radar Michigan is brought to you in part by the Michigan State Housing and Development Authority, investing in people, places, and partnerships to help transform Michigan and the Michigan economy. In cities, towns, and neighborhoods, people are building better places to live and better communities. Also by the Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure. The Komen Race for the Cure series raises significant funds and awareness for the fight against breast cancer, celebrates breast cancer survivorship, and honors those who have lost their battle with the disease. More info at Komen.org. Also in part by the Food Bank Council of Michigan, Michigan's statewide food bank network, committed to the alleviation of hunger in Michigan and in our nation. The Food Bank Council of Michigan gathers food and funds to help stock Michigan's food banks. Support for Under the Radar Michigan comes from Bigby Coffee, celebrating 17 years as a Michigan company. Gift cards, coffee mugs, and coffee by the pound are available in-store and online. Locations at BIGGBY.com. I've been around the world, but there's one place I keep coming back to. And the more I explore, the more I realize it's the place to be. I'm Tom Dalton, and this is Under the Radar Michigan. You've seen it in Hollywood movies and you've heard about it in famous songs, but now thanks to UTR, there's even a TV show about it. I'm of course talking about Saginaw, Michigan. This town's got history, culture, grit, and a ton of people who are proud to call it their own. Born and raised, been here for 48 years, raised our family, raised our kids, and we sell Saginaw, so it's been good to us. A good community to have a business, uh, housing's affordable, uh, there is a lot to do. I love Saginaw because of the people that live in our region. Because we have the Temple Theater and the Saginaw Spirit and we have a lot of art and culture to offer. Almost everyone in my neighborhood owns or operates a small, you know, small business from their house or just from somewhere close by. It's really cool because everybody supports each other. You get negativity wherever you go. It's the people that have the positive attitude that make this a great place to live. Saginaw's pretty awesome. Hey, even Mayor Greg Branch had a few nice things to say. Go figure. What are some of the things that are helping move Saginaw forward right now? We've got a really, really active uh, assortment of neighborhood associations. So people have decided that, hey, I'm, it's my city, I'm gonna take charge of it. Um, concurrent with that, we've just got a lot of exciting things happening in terms of economic development. Uh, you know, our, our largest industry, Traditionally, like Detroit, like Flint, was was the automotive industry still is a, a, a big player here. Uh, but uh, you know, healthcare has grown. We are the healthcare center for everything to the bridge north of here. Um, and so, you know, we've got a lot of development around private physician practices, hospital loan practices. Central Michigan University is going to be opening a medical school here within the next couple of years. So, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a, of a different twist for us to be a medical center rather than a manufacturing center, but there's still an awful lot of manufacturing going on too. If you could only tell somebody three things about Saginaw, let's say they're, they're considering coming here to live, work, play, whatever, what would you tell them? Uh, it's, uh, it's a place of tremendous natural beauty and architectural beauty. Um, it has an amazing educational, medical uh, infrastructure. And we're right in the middle of everything. Uh, everything in Michigan is, is easy to get to from here. We're an hour and a half from Ann Arbor. We're two hours from Detroit. We're two and a half hours from the bridge. So wherever you want to go in Michigan, it's, it's easy to get to from here. Actually, yeah, you're only two hours from my house. So there you go. Bonus, I'm coming back. OK, thanks, See you Mayor. for dinner. You buying? <laughs> Saginaw is located in the heart of Michigan's Great Lakes Bay region, just 100 miles northwest of Detroit. Let's check it out. Now at this place, you either get it, you don't get it, or you just haven't discovered it yet. Come on. Now with me, I just didn't know about it. But with some people, if you even mention Spots bread, they talk about it like it was the best bread ever, ever made, made by man. man. 
Now watch this guy work. Is he man or machine? Actually, he's Joe Spots. He's the owner, chief bread maker, and the hardest working man in dough business. I have to tell you, I've been to a lot of businesses before. I've never seen an owner work as hard as I've been seeing you work today. Oh, no, I'm in, I'm in um, Tahiti having a Mai Tai right now, you know? Yeah, right, that, in, your, in your head, but that's not yeah, where you are. Right. You're here working. Exactly. Uh, how many employees you got? I have 13. 13? Yeah. And I noticed you guys aren't automated at all. Why is that? Well, if you change, if you go and um, automate, you have to change the loaf of bread to the machines. You don't want to do that. We change the machines to our, our style loaf of bread. That's very key. That's why our machines are so old. I kid you not, Joe, my next door neighbor grew up in Saginaw, okay. and he said if I didn't bring back a loaf of Spots bread, that I couldn't borrow his lawnmower anymore. What do you guys put in this bread? Um, just the basic ingredients, just we haven't changed it in um, 150 years. How many loaves do you make here, let's say in a given day? Well, we average about um, 8 to 10 racks. There's 288 loaves of bread per rack of bread, so... Um, Don't ask me to do math. Yeah, Darn there you it. go. A couple loaves of bread. So for those of you who are paying attention, the Spots family has made a lot of bread for a lot of years right here in Saginaw. What do you think a place like yours means to the community here? Well, we're, we're almost like an icon here. So we're going to stay in Michigan, and in Saginaw, Michigan here. And um, I might be the last generation here, but um, we've had a good going of it. And Saginaw is our, is our base town. And it's great to see everything being done the old-fashioned way with real people. Marsha Matfield's been making Spots bread for over 18 years. It's a very old German recipe. It's the same exact recipe that they brought from Germany. It's a coarse bread with a hard crust which you don't find very much out on the market anymore. Who's your normal customer? Oh, wow, that's hard to say because we really don't have a normal customer. Oh, they're all like me, perfect. Yes, they're all like you, Alice. <laughs> well, before I leave, I have to taste some of this bread because I've heard people either get it, they don't get it, or they haven't discovered you guys yet. So I have, that's to, true. I have to taste this bread. Mm -hmm. it, is a, it is a love hate. Either you love it or you don't like it. Gosh, I hope I like it. I hope you like it too. <laughs> Well, I finally got to try some Spots bread, but you know me, I like everything. Jim, start the car! <laughs> you know, as much as I love Michigan, I've always wanted to go to Japan. But to be honest with you, who can afford that? So I did the next best thing. I went to the Japanese Cultural Center right here in Saginaw. It's a beautiful place that's all things Japan. And Yoko Mosner made me feel right at home. Now, if you could tell me a little bit about this, the tea house we're in. Yes. Uh, this interior of this tea house was done by a three Japanese carpenters came from Kyoto who were trained specially to build the temples and the tea house. That means all those joint of the woodwork were put together with the joinery. They did not use any nails at There's all. No, no nails used in the structure? No. no. This tea house was built almost 26 years ago and standing solid without nail. It's so amazing. That's, Absolutely that's, amazing. Yes. Well, I couldn't think of a better way to steep myself in Japanese culture than to participate in a real tea ceremony. How am I doing so far? Good. Thank you. Well, at least I tried, and I got to give it to him. These ladies were real sports putting up with me. Well, thank you so much for letting me partake in the tea ceremony. It was absolutely beautiful. You were very patient, and thanks for letting me put my hat back on. <laughs> That's all right. You look good either way. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're sweet. Thank you. So if you're into experiencing different cultures, or you just need a reason to come explore Saginaw, check out the Japanese Cultural Center. You'll think you're turning Japanese. I really think so. You know, the good thing about a bad restaurant is you can always get a good seat. But the bad thing about a good restaurant is well, you know where I'm going with that. The locals told us that if you're looking for great food, come to Fralia's. And if you're looking for a seat, you better come early. We come here probably three times a week. It's a different place to go. It has fresh, kind of fun food, not just your normal chain food. The atmosphere is awesome. The people are cool. They always remember you when you come back. And it's really cool. I like it. This place, somebody, somebody put some heart and soul in the sandwich. And it was fantastic. Those hearts and souls belong to Jenny and Adam Bolt. Two creative entrepreneurs who brought a great food philosophy to Saginaw's Old Town. Made from scratch uh, is the key. You know, it tastes better. You know, we have this mom's recipes on the no bakes and mom's recipes on the you know magic bars, the soups, all that as much as you can. And we have something for everybody. You know, a Braunschweiger. I can't believe how many we sell of those. I just love it. 
and it's you know um, kind of old time, you know, like you know back in the day sandwiches we try to do and you know not get too crazy but just be good. Well, now tell me a little bit about Adam's background because he's back there slaving away in the kitchen while we're out here talking. Oh, I know. The funny thing is we grew up as kids. There's high school sweethearts, so we oh, the old town's our home. And so, you know, he's an artist at heart. He was an uh, art major his whole life. And then one day he was at Western going to school and he goes, started cooking for all his roommates and everybody. He goes, I think I want to go into cooking. I was like, okay, it's, it's an art in itself. And then he went to cooking school and uh, we had a child and we're like, what better way to go back home? And then here we are. Now, earlier on, the mayor mentioned how close Saginaw is to everything. So just imagine how close you are to some amazing ferret fralias. Food for thought. A wise man once said, art will save us. Now, I don't know who he was, but he must have known Eric Schantz. His art is giving a lot of people here in Saginaw a renewed energy and hope for the future. Your art is meant to capture people's attention. What are you trying to say to people once you've got their attention? Well, with, with, with Saginaw, it comes down to, uh, I want to promote positive images and, and give people something to look at that's, that kind of sets our city apart from other cities, uh, shows people about you know, not just street art, but shows people more about our heritage and the history of the structures and the people that lived here. When we first started doing it, I, I, me, I wanted to do it because I live in a town that you know was kind of suffering, we had a lot of boarded up structures and things, and right. I'm tired of looking at it. Right. And so the one thing I can do is paint. And so I started doing murals. I wasn't a mural painter until I started painting in the city of Saginaw. But it is just something positive, and to be driving past it and see that pop of color, mm -hmm. you know, popping out, standing out, it shows people that somebody cares, shows people there's progress being made, and that's what really kept me doing it. It was how it was affecting people. I had no idea when I started that it was gonna be such an emotional connection to the art for the people of the city. Eric is the type of artist that could take his talents anywhere in the world but he's dedicated himself to improving the way people see his hometown of Saginaw. And that, just like his mustache, is Saginaw awesome. Every now and then we're fortunate enough to find a passionate and energetic person to guide us through a city. And in Saginaw, we couldn't have asked for anyone better than Kristen Knoll. I was born and raised in Saginaw. Um, my family all lives around here. Um, my mom family owned a farm, um, so that's a farming community, and all of my aunts, uncles, and relatives live, you know, within a very small radius. So my family's here, it's home. Um, I've always loved Michigan. I, I went to school um, in the state, and actually, uh, after I graduated, um, applied to a bunch of different jobs across the country, Boston, Chicago, and everywhere, and the first place that I got a job was back home in Saginaw, oh. um, which my mother was thrilled about. Of so, course. Of course. Um, so I'm back in Saginaw um, mainly because I love it, and it's home and the people that I know and love are here and I want to make it a better place. I'm glad people like you are choosing to live in Michigan because you didn't have to, but you did anyway. It's true, and I love Michigan, so the mitten. There Gotta you go. love the mitten. Hey, we've been the right hand this time. Awesome. <laughs> so despite what you think you know about Saginaw, know this, there's no reason not to come for a visit. Heck, I'm coming back real soon, and I kind of have to. I ate my neighbor's spots bread in the car. Oh, boy. Hey folks, I'm in Clare, Michigan, and honestly, if you're looking for a beautiful little town to visit, Clare is awesome. There's everything that you, uh, oh, gosh. Hello, officer. Step over here. Beautiful day. Where are we going? In the vehicle. Well, where are we going? I'll ask the questions. In the car. Yes, sir. This can't be good. No. Oh, boy. Hey, I've got a mustache. Don't you think maybe I could be a cop? Well, this is a nice town. It's walkable. Read the police. I knew it, a donut shop. I knew it. Actually, this isn't just any donut shop. This is Cops and Donuts, an awesome donut shop and bakery right downtown Clare that's owned and operated by, that's right, nine of Clare's finest. After I got booked and fingerprinted for, well, my legs being too skinny, I was put in the custody of Officer Greg Rhino Reinerson. Aside from the obvious reason, how did a bunch of cops end up owning a donut shop? Well, when you've got a historic bakery that opened in 1896, it's been at a scratch-made bakery forever, how do you let that close? So the cops are always called to rescue everybody from the cat in the tree, everything. So we pooled our We rescued our a bakery. We rescued the bakery. That's right. Well, would you all just pooled your money and bought it? Yeah, actually, Bubba and I, we sat down at lunch. Bubba and I are born and raised here in Clara, our heart's here. And we tore the top off our Busilli's pizza box. And we called up the current owner and said, hey, is it true you're selling the bakery? And they said, yeah. 
and uh, you're going to close it, closing it up. We can't sell it. We'll see if you're trying to sell it. Give us a price right now. We put them on the spot. They gave us a price. We sit down and we started figuring it up. And we said, let's get everybody with a full-time paycheck in case we got to keep putting money into it. Yeah. It worked out to nine of us. Chief, sergeants, administrative assistant, and the officers. The whole police force everybody bought the donut shop. Everybody with a full-time check. Uh, we've got 32 employees now and uh, none of them are our family member. None so of us are taking any pay. So you saved a bakery, you created jobs. Exactly. Are you yep. served donuts to other people or is it just for you guys? Uh, we eat some of them, but not a lot, no. <laughs> yeah, we're running a lot of people through. We serve a lot of donuts. So you guys don't mind the whole, the running gag that police officers usually end up at donut shops no, and stuff? No, it, it all started for a good reason. Back in the old days, everybody, the, the cities didn't have police cars for everyone, right. and the Flatfoots out walking needed a place to get in out of the cold or the rain and have a coffee. Well, the bakeries were open. The bakers were working all night long. They'd be checking the alleys. They'd come in the back door and have a donut and coffee, and that's where Cops and Donuts came from. And people come from far and wide to see why Cops and Donuts are such a natural combination. I'm with Officer Bubba now, and he's an expert on geography. And I understand, you are, right? Absolutely not. Okay, anyway, I understand these maps, they show all the different countries people have come from to get these donuts here? Yeah, we put these maps up in September. And um, just this week we had a, a young lady here from Sri Lanka. Oh my God. And another one from uh, Bulgaria. It's amazing to me, you've got news, people from New Zealand, Madagascar, uh, Iceland, what's Svalbard? <laughs> From all over the place. Uh, the love of donuts goes worldwide. Even the Svalbard. That's amazing. Even there. Hey, Officer Bubba, I noticed you guys have a lot of really cool merchandise here, but I need to take something home to my wife. You got anything she might like? How about this? It's our perfume. Probable cause. Provocative. <laughs> so now that I've had my fill of donuts and uh, perfume, I think I forgot to mention that Claire is located in the middle of the mitten, just 20 minutes due north of Mount Pleasant. Well, I don't know about you, but all those donuts had me hankering for a piece of pie. So next stop, the Herrick House and Mulberry Cafe, where Mary Ann Shirley's pies reign supreme. I came here for one reason and one reason only, and that's for your pie. But then I noticed you've got a lot more going on in there. That's true. We, we actually have about a 2,000 square foot retail home, and de home decor gifts. And we've added a cafe and a deck with a waterfall and uh, got lots of pie in there for you. The food here must be pretty good because isn't your husband the, the medical examiner here in town? <laughs> so the food's gotta be good. Well, the medic, being the medical examiner has nothing to do with the food, but yes, he is. He's the medical examiner for this county and an adjoining county, so that's true. Okay, so around here, the cops make the donuts and the medical examiner makes the pies. <laughs> I like this town. Now, I don't suppose you were born and raised in Clare. I was born anything. and raised in Clare, Michigan. You like it here? I love it. I love my hometown. It is uh, quintessential small town America. It's where people aspire to live. When you hear about small town America, I feel this is it. I have to agree, but as nice as Clare is, Mary Ann's pies alone are worth a visit. Now, after all that sweet, I needed me some meat, so I slid over to the White House for some classic sliders. Uh, oops, wrong B-roll. You know, here on UTR, we love small towns, we love small businesses, and that's right, we love hamburgers. Come on. Now, every town needs a burger joint, and here at Claire's White House, owner Denise Jenks has packed a whole lot of tradition into a place smaller than UTR World Headquarters. And that's pretty small. How long has this place been here? Since 1935. Since 1935? It's older than me by a couple of years. <laughs> um, you're, how many owners have there been? I believe I'm the seventh. Two, seventh. two brothers built it. And actually, we have a picture over there in the house that's behind this set right here. And they pushed the house back and then just built this little front. They pushed the whole house back and built this little hamburger place. Yeah, and just had, had a counter and three tables. Oh my god. So they took the counter out and that actually expanded the seating to 24. And you now live in the little house behind it? Yes. How's your commute? Oh, it's, it's, some days it's really tough. <laughs> you also mentioned uh, this place came with two employees. Mm -hmm. That's what? Julie. Julie? She's been here 40, how many years, Julie? 42. 42 years. This is the first and only uh, job she's ever had. Great. Jackie's been here 25 years. I've seen bigger clubhouses. I mean, I the place is, the place is, but it's so cool you walk in Don't let the size fool ya. It'll, uh, it'll jump up and bite ya. And then you get going on that grill and you get 50 people, you know, feeding you. Got the out, yeah, the outside seating is nice. And I noticed the floor has a nice slant, slant to yeah. it. Right. I dropped a quarter earlier. I have no idea where I went. Yeah. But. We have a secret quarter drawer that we don't tell anybody. <laughs> 
Well, I never did find that quarter, but just down the street, I stumbled onto the 515 Gallery, where director Kim Kleinhart is teaching kids to become more than just artists. First of all, your gallery rocks. This is awesome. Oh, thank you. Now, uh, there's a bunch of kids in the back breaking stuff. Is that supposed to be happening, or? With my permission, oh, yes. Okay, what are they doing? They are on, in the process of creating a mosaic for our back wall outside. And the community has brought all of their broken dishes and paraphernalia that we can break up. You want broken dishes, then just give, give me a couple of days, I'll be back. You can so. do that. Now, you, you actually teach kids how to not only be artists, you're a high school teacher. Correct, here at Clare High School. Right, but you also teach them how to run an art gallery? They are in charge. They actually do everything from writing the business plan to do the accounting, choosing the professional artists that we uh, feature here at the gallery. So you're trying to eliminate starving artists. We are, another option. Now, what does a place like this mean to the community? We have been so fortunate to have such support. They get so excited about each and every artist that we bring in. About every two and a half months, we change up the show so that we're trying to show the community the diversity in art. And so they've seen everything from abstract oils to um, hanging stained glass. And you got a lot of art talent back there? I do. Actually, many of them have their work here on the, um, in the gallery for the student show right now. Now, everybody I've talked to today is born and raised in Clare. Are you born and raised in Clare, too? Actually, yes, in this area. <laughs> See, this must be we a nice... love it here. This must be a nice we town because nobody ever leaves. No, we love it here, yeah. Well, I like it here so much, I'm staying here, too. And where better to stay than the iconic Doherty Hotel? It's been a cornerstone of Clare since 1924. And if you don't believe me, just ask A.J. Doherty. So the name of the hotel is Doherty, and your last name is Doherty. Coincidence? Uh, coincidence, my grandfather built it. Oh, so it's not a coincidence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there were all dirt roads between here and Lansing, and oh, a 10 that wasn't even hardly a road. Yeah. But he had faith in the center part of the state, and he was a senator down in Lansing for a while. But he came up here and built half the town, and he built the Doherty Hotel. It's unusual, and it's awesome for us, town this size, to have a big historic hotel like this right downtown. Well, we're very fortunate the two expressways, 27 and 10, cross right here, so we get a lot of traffic. If you can get the traffic off the expressways, then we can get them. Now, this is the Leprechaun Lounge, and I notice there's a lot of leprechauns on this mural. What's the significance there? Well, actually, when I was growing up, this was a uh, barber shop right here. <laughs> and uh, there was another meeting room right here, a fellow by the name of Charlie Strange owned it. Well, he tore it all out, and he uh, found a guy in Sackadaw to come up and uh, paint the murals. But he, he got free room and board. My father gave him free room and board, and uh, he painted the murals. And after five months, he enjoyed the free room and board, and my father said, that's it, you're all done. And so he left. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, they're, uh, they're, they're very interesting, and they're all leprechauns, and so we called it the leprechaun room. That's very cool. Hey, if I paint your house, can I get my room free for tonight? We'll work it out. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it, now I have to work. <laughs> so we had a great stay at the Doherty and met some awesome people in Clare. And the best part is, with all I ate on this trip, I don't think I'll have to worry about another skinny legs infraction anytime soon. Oh boy. Huh? Oh. Boy, have you ever gone to somebody's website and you get there and it's kind of disappointing? Well, you should go to utrmichigan.com because if you've never been there before, you won't know what to expect, so you can't be disappointed. You can go to our visitor's guide and find out places we've been, tell us where to go. You can jump to our Facebook page or even find out where to get a hat like mine, huh? So go to utrmichigan.com, and I promise you will not be disappointed. Watch. Aha! I love it! <laughs> Under the Radar Michigan is brought to you in part by the Michigan State Housing and Development Authority, investing in people, places, and partnerships to help transform Michigan and the Michigan economy. In cities, towns, and neighborhoods, people are building better places to live and better communities. Also by the Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure. The Komen Race for the Cure series raises significant funds and awareness for the fight against breast cancer, celebrates breast cancer survivorship, and honors those who have lost their battle with the disease. More info at Komen.org. Also in part by the Food Bank Council of Michigan, Michigan's statewide food bank network, committed to the alleviation of hunger in Michigan and in our nation. The Food Bank Council of Michigan gathers food and funds to help stock Michigan's food banks. Support for Under the Radar Michigan comes from Bigby Coffee. 
celebrating 17 years as a Michigan company. Gift cards, coffee mugs, and coffee by the pound are available in-store and online. Locations at BIGGBY.com. Closed captioning for Under the Radar Michigan is made possible by Shamrock Travel in downtown Rochester. Shamrock Travel, providing complete travel services right here in Michigan for over 20 years. 